Hi, today I am joined by the amazing Caroline Bond. I'm so excited, I've been watching your videos for Yonks now and I can't believe you've been able to fit me into your incredibly Brilliant. hectic schedule. And our aligned. lovely model. Hello. Hello. Mm. So today um, we thought we would do a video about makeup application for acne sufferers. Now, your skin is really not that bad at all. Mm. You've got beautiful skin. However, what we wanted to do today was to convey to you the principles of making up acne prone skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And they are, whatever products you use, that all works the same. So if you follow the same techniques, whatever you're using, you'll get the same effects. Amazing. But it's basically being able to cover your skin so what you don't want to be seen is not seen and then the rest of your skin looks really glowy. Exactly. Rather than thinking, oh, I've got a few blemishes so I'm going to cover my whole face in makeup, give myself a very flat, made up look, which is obviously in turn, as you well know, therefore damages your skin long term. So it's just literally covering those areas you need to and treating your skin like it's fresh and gorgeous, which it is. Exactly. I think that's so true. Even someone who has quite active acne, if you actually work it out, there's usually about 70-80% of the skin that's completely fine. Mm. So you start attacking it with products that are super high coverage all over, it actually creates the illusion there is something you're trying to hide. Yeah. So, I'm going to let you crack on. Okay, great. So first of all, we want to eliminate the redness. So obviously you'll be using concealer to eliminate the redness, but one little key step that you can do to make that a little bit less high coverage in terms of the product you're using is to use a colour corrector. Now, green, a green tone, is a wonderful shade to use just over any redness. I'm going to be using a product here. I'm going to use it applied from a brush and just gently apply over the red areas of the skin. You only need a small amount, and as you can see, it just lifts and takes away the angry colour of the skin. You're actually the person who got me back doing a bit of green colour correcting, Caroline. Honestly, I haven't used one of these sorts of products since my teens. They were too scary. But modern colour correctors are a completely different animal, aren't they? Absolutely. The textures are so much better, mm -hmm. um, much more refined. They don't move so much. And I actually prefer to use a colour corrector that um, is in a solid form, so I can be more bespoke about where I apply it. If you use it in a liquid form, it tends to travel over the skin too much yep. and then you get too much of a green glow. Whereas this is specific <laughs> for that red area. Shrek is not sexy. <laughs> I've actually used this in a chap in clinic. Quite really? Interesting. Yeah, you know, guys have far fewer options, don't they, when it comes to redness in their skin. They feel really self-conscious. So Absolutely, it's... it doesn't read his makeup. Exactly. So this is a perfect start. So already you feel like you're onto a win. There's less for you to kind of conceal. There's less product for you to put on. Now, the first rule of covering a complexion that's got a few little blemishes, or a lot of blemishes, is to look at the beautiful part of where your skin glows and looks really clear. Now, just use a really light foundation, a little bit of a glow in it, and apply it with a big foundation brush like this. Start from the T-zone and just apply the base as you would do normally, ignoring all those areas that are upsetting you, causing you any annoyance. The reason is, is we just want to really conceal the areas that need to be covered and we want to leave the rest of the skin glowing. So when someone looks at you, or when you look at yourself in the mirror, what you see in the reflection is a really lovely, perfected skin, but that looks fresh. You don't want to have a mask of heavy foundation because you've got a few imperfections around your chin or cheek. It's so important, isn't it? And especially in adult women with acne, where actually the trouble zones are really quite localised and limited. The last thing you want, as you say, is this heavy coverage that suggests there's something to hide. Absolutely. It's also a question of time, though, isn't it? A lot of women like high coverage products because they apply them very quickly in the morning, but I really do encourage my patients to take the time to do that more localised pinpoint concealing and keep the coverage light. It is worth it, isn't it? Yeah, it looks much more modern for a start. So yeah. you can wear your, a great colour on your lip or you can wear a great eyeliner flick. It's Vienna, it was too weird to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so you're keeping the skin looking modern and fresh, and that's the key part. So if you've got a few little blemishes, it doesn't matter. They can be perfected, but your skin can look modern and fresh, not like a mask. Yeah, so it's already starting to look really polished. So very, very together. light. That was just a real suede of foundation, really, really light and glossy. Now, it does seem quite complicated. I do and will be using up to five brushes in my hand here. So the first one here is a foundation brush to create that really lovely light glow of foundation. Now, I'm going to use a reflective concealer. Now, a light reflecting concealer is key to use underneath the eyes. So where you've got the bluey gray area of your eyes, here and here, 
You don't want to use an opaque concealer, which you will use to cover um, any blemishes or pigmentation, etc. So it's a different consistency. Yeah, it's really important, isn't it? And especially in older skin as well, the tendency for a sort of higher coverage product to settle into lines. Oh, yes. Hard to work with, isn't it? Totally ages the skin. Now, the key thing with application with any light reflecting concealer is you almost need to place it on the skin like war paint and settle it into the skin before you remove it. I'm just going to show you just doing a little bit more what I mean by this because this product, as I said, reflects the light. So it's got little pigments that do reflect the light and they need to bounce the light from this area. So if you don't put enough product on or if you apply it and then sweep it away, which is such a common thing that I see women do, I'll show you in a second, it takes away the power of this product. Someone will put it on and they will just wipe across like windscreen wipers like this and the product's gone. Let it settle into the skin and then just use the warmth of your ring finger and push it. So visualize that you're pushing that product into that area of your face and those lovely reflective pigments bounce the light back, making you look much more awake and fresh without being overly made up, or like you said, with your older clients, looking older or aging your skin. Visualize for me. I'm just gonna dance this over Fiona's eyes, just take a little bit of the blue away, very subtly, not overload your lids this product and then just smooth it away. He's got mm. fantastic brows, hasn't she? He's got great brows. <laughs> Carry your heart mm. out. Great. <laughs> okay. So we've used the colour corrector, a light suede of foundation all over Fiona's skin and just use a light reflector concealer under her eyes. Now the most important thing again is to make sure that you match the colour of your foundation to your body. Always make sure that you look at your chest or your shoulders depending on what you're wearing because if you choose a foundation that's too light it will instantly look unnatural. Keeping your foundation natural is getting the exact colour to match your body. So to really accentuate the glow on Fiona's complexion, I'm going to be using a cream highlighter. And this is going to be on the high planes of her face. So across her cheekbone, under her brow, on the bridge of her nose, where the bony part is, not where the soft part is, just the bony part. And the other side. And it's not to be afraid of a little bit of sheen, right? Even with those, you know, who are prone to acne, who are a bit scared of oiliness, mm. I'm always trying to educate patients to sort of almost, you know, revisit the way they look at their skin because as things clear up, you know, oiliness becomes dewiness, right? Yes. Um, and you, you know, this is what keeps everything looking fresh and real. It's about embracing your complexion again, almost. Absolutely, and it's about having the glow in the right places. Exactly. If I was to put this lovely highlighter on Fiona's chin, on the top of her nose, top yeah, exactly. thing, yeah. it would start looking all flashy, and that does it there, <laughs> sweaty, and that also doesn't accentuate the beauty of her bone structure. Right. So it's having it the shine in the right areas and having the skin matte in yeah. the other areas creates Meaning really lovely the right balance. dimensions. Yeah, exactly. So it's really important, and I went through years and years of acne, and I always loved and felt much more confident if I had the rest of my face sort of quite heavily concealed, but I had my cheekbones glowing. I just felt fresher. So that's the cream. Now always apply your cream products before you were to use any powder or blotting powders um, or heavier concealers. Use that first. Now I'm going to go in with a smaller brush and I'm going to be using an opaque concealer to conceal Fiona's blemishes. Just paint the density of the concealer just over that area only. I'm using a shade. There's a couple of tones lighter than Fiona's skin and the foundation that I use just because if you are covering something that's darker than your skin tone if you use the same shade it will almost appear like a little bit of a shadow under the skin and look a little bit grey. Once you've applied that then just use your ring finger very gently just the warmth of your ring finger just to buff the edges away so you keep the density of the product over the entire spot but in the other areas it's just buffed away. If you had something really humongous, Caroline, would you go back in with a second layer? Absolutely. If you have a really big sore spot. A classic premenstrual yeah. lump that happens just below the corner of the yeah. mouth. You know <laughs> what I mean? And start with the concealer and then just layer, 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 layer. Creating fine layers of concealer will really give you better longevity with your coverage throughout the day rather than just going in with a really heavy trowel of makeup. So just build up your coverage very gently. Try and do it in daylight or use a mirror that has lights around it so you can see it. And just use a very small brush very delicately and just again 
press over just to blend into the rest of your base. The lighting is so important, that's a really good point. Yeah, the lighting is really key. Never look at yourself with a light that's coming from one side because it will really emphasise all the lumps and bumps in your skin. Always look towards daylight when you're putting your makeup on. It will look much more beautiful. You'll see the effects of the makeup much better. So it's really important to set the products that you've put on your skin. So on Fiona's face, I'm going to be pressing this blotting paper just into the areas that I've concealed. And the areas that I don't want her to shine on her face are obviously the T-zone areas. So it's between the brow, either side of the nose, and just that area, the problem area around the chin. I'm so glad to see you a fan of blotting papers. I mean, I really do recommend patients carrying those around with them, as well as having some product to touch up through the day. I know I put a ban on powder for a lot of people and it doesn't necessarily suit the way they're used to making up, but I just find that if you have product you can use on the go, maybe use one of those portable under eye concealer pens, and carry around a little pot of concealer. I just think it looks fresh. Caroline, you've done an amazing job. She looks fresh, natural. I can't see a thing. I don't even know she has a problem with blemishes at all. And you've just embraced what's good about her complexion in a way that I imagine makes you feel quite confident. Definitely. Yeah, so thank you for doing that, using my principles with your amazing handiwork. Um, I think it's important to give that message. You can cover acne and keep your complexion looking fresh, real and natural. Thank you very much. My pleasure.